Good morning and welcome to Bellstone Common on Dartmoor. Where in this video, we're gonna be doing two things. First of all, most obviously, I'm here to capture some landscape photographs. And second, I'm gonna tell you about one of the most important bits of equipment I have when I'm doing winter landscape photography. Yes, good morning, welcome to Dartmoor. Like I said, we're gonna be doing two things in this video. First of all, we're gonna be capturing landscape photographs and I'm gonna talk about a little bit about uh, a bit of photography gear that I have for, for wintery conditions. But I'm gonna do that at the end of the video because I've really got to focus on the photographs. It's sunrise there for my little window of opportunity to capture photographs, it's quite small. So we need to prioritize on that first. So as you can see about me, it's quite wintry up here. The air temperature is minus one. I think they said, but the uh, wind chill factor will bring it down to about minus five. So it's pretty nippy. Now I've been studying the weather forecast all week, hoping for snow. It's not really materialized. This is probably the best um, I've seen it. But do you know what? Looking at the, the landscape here, I think, if I had a complete dump in the snow, I'd lose a lot of the texture of the rocks and the shapes and the patterns and the ground. So actually I think these kind of wintry conditions where you've got this light dusting of snow and some frost in the, on the grasses, is probably gonna be ideal. I can still see the color in the ground and I think it looks really nice, really wintry. It kind of shows that more looking at its best in the winter. What I'm hoping for is the gap over there, which is unfortunately a shrinking gap as the sun, when it comes up above the horizon and get that first golden light, it will kind of bathe this frosty ground in golden light and it should make for some really nice pictures. There is obviously a little bit of peril. I've got a big bank of cloud coming in over here. Now it looks like it's raining over there. I would imagine the time it gets here, it's gonna be snowing, which sounds great, but then I'll lose the first of the morning light. So it's one of two things is really gonna happen this morning. It's gonna be an epic morning of photography or I'm gonna get snowed on. Okay, so I'm getting ready for my first competition and judging by the way the weather's coming in and the bank of cloud over there, it could be my only competition this morning, but never mind. All you need is one shot. So I've got my Nikon Z7 this morning with my 14 to 30 lens on and I'm shooting in a vertical orientation. Now this is to allow me to make the most of these fantastic rocks here. They kind of create, uh, they've got lots of points in them, create a leading line out to the bulk of the tour there and out onto the rest of Dartmoor. And they're covered in this beautiful, frosty sort of dusting of snow and they look absolutely fantastic. And I'm shooting a little bit wide because I want to get some of these grasses down here uh, in the shot as well as the tour there. Now, as you probably notice, I've got the tripod a little bit lower. This is because at head height, the top of that tour sits right on the horizon. So I'd rather it was clearly above the horizon or clearly below the horizon. I think it just looks a little bit messy when it's uh, bang on the horizon. The magic source to this picture will be the rising sun, which I'm hoping I'm gonna get. It could be a really good photograph if I get that light. Once it pops up, it's gonna catch the grass, the side of these rocks here, and all this frost here, and it can make for a really magical picture. All oh, that big bank of clouds is gonna come in. It's, it's, this is the exciting thing about landscape photography. I've got all the elements here to make a great picture. I just hope it all comes together. I'm just about ready to take the shot. Looking over there, I can see the cloud. I can just see the orange line just where the sun is behind it. So I'm just about to get that morning light. So I'm just gonna do a couple of checks, first of all, before the action starts. So I'm just gonna check, I've got my focus point selected. I'm checking the, the histogram. I don't wanna blow anything out. Double check that. I'm gonna take a quick test shot. Two second timer. I'm gonna play the image back. Check I haven't got blown any highlights. Check that it's focused and acceptably sharp in the areas. That's all looking good. Always best to do these checks before the action happens. I'm all ready, just need that light, come on. At last, the sun is above the cloud. It's time to start taking some photographs. I can just see the sunlight is just catching the frost and those grasses down there. And I can see it catching across all the hills. And I can start to see the side of these rocks now starting to sparkle. This is what I've been waiting for. Ah, oh, just, just magic.
what a fantastic morning of photography. It's really special when you can come up to Dartmoor and you get these nice wintry conditions. I even had a little snow shower come through. In fact, it's still snowing just a little bit. I had a really great time taking those pictures. And you know, even if I didn't get any pictures coming up here, it's just, it's just absolutely brilliant. Now, it is quite wintry. And I did say at the beginning of this video that I was going to talk to you about a particular bit of gear that helps me with my winter photography, and that is gloves. I seem to suffer quite badly with cold hands. It doesn't take much for my hands to get quite painful, and therefore once I've got painful cold hands, I'm not taking any more pictures. I find it really hard to, to concentrate, and my creativity goes out the window. I don't know how, I don't know if any of you out there also suffer from uh, quite similar problems. So I have struggled to find Good gloves. And when I say good gloves, it's you know they're either too thin and don't offer enough protection, but they give you lots of versatility for using your camera, or they're really thick and they keep your hands nice and toasty, but almost impossible to use with a camera. The, the gloves that I'm using today are these Valorette mitts. Um, these have been sent to me by Valorette, but I've been a customer of Valorette for, for some time. Actually, I backed their original Kickstarter program, I think way back in 2016. I still have that original pair of gloves, which I continue to use today, but I was looking for something that uh, maybe offered a bit more protection, uh, but also offered a bit of versatility. And I think this is where these mitts come in. Let me tell you about uh, some of the features that I've um, found when I've been using them probably over the last couple of months now. So they're mitts, so obviously they keep your hands nice and warm. They've got these lovely adjustable straps here so I can tighten them up, keep them nice and snug. There's a couple of small compartments here. I guess you could keep some memory cards uh, or something in there. But this is the special way about them. We've got the zipper. If I unzip this, I can expose my fingers, but I have a liner glove that comes with them as well. So I've still got all that dexterity of being able to use my camera. And they're also, you can use them with, with touch screens, but I've still got some of the protection around the rest of my hand there. It helps keep my hand warm. So I'm not exposing everything. I can also pull my thumb out there. These have got little magnetic things here that hold that back. And there's a little cl uh, clip here and that holds that out the way. So if you want to keep that out of the way, you just snap that in place like that. And that's that. So that is quite a bit of uh, versatility there. Now, if you want to give yourself even a bit more, you can actually take them off. And they've got a little uh, leash around here that I got. So I can take these off and I don't have to worry about putting them down and forgetting them or dropping them or something like that. So that is really handy there. Uh, and then I can use the gloves as I see fit. So for me, these are really handy. I'll put my hand back in there get that back in there keep it nice and toasty the temperature here has actually dropped even though the sun's up it feels a lot colder i put that on there i can zip that up with my hand or thanks to the little tether there i can pull that and my hands are all protected again nice and warm so for me I think these are going to be, I wouldn't say the perfect glove, because for me, there's no such thing as a perfect glove. There's always a compromise when you're using a glove. It's never quite as tactile as using your bare hands. But for me, having that versatility of opening up that glove and then still being able to use that liner glove to operate my camera, is a real bonus. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, watching me capture those wintry landscape images and give you a bit of information about those Valorette gloves. I hope that was useful to you. But if you have liked this video, please do give me a like, leave a comment. If you've got any questions about the gloves, about the pictures that I take, please do connect with me in the comments section below. And if you've got time, share the video. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button as well. And if you just happen to have an extra few minutes, I would really appreciate it if you did check out one of my other videos. I'll include some links there in the corner of the screen. But until the next adventure, I shall see you then.